So you wanna know how to do the high bar barbell back squat. Well, in today's video, we're gonna walk you step by step through the process of executing this with perfection. Make sure you stick around to the end because we're also gonna reveal the biggest fatal mistake that people make when they perform back squats or any squat in general. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hey, in case we haven't met, my name's Yanni Bormeister. I am one of the founders of Unity Gym and the Foundation Movement System, the gym that teaches people how to move and nourish instead of diet and exercise. Now, we are gonna dive straight into this exercise. I've got one of our head trainers and also co-founders here with us today to demonstrate. Let's go. The high bar barbells back squat is one of the best bang for your buck exercises. There is no doubt that it's one of our favorites in the Foundation Movement System and it's there for a reason. It is one of the movements that disrupt your metabolism and burn the most calories. So for a body composition standpoint, the barbell back squat is like the godfather of exercise, probably second only to the deadlift, maybe even more so than the deadlift because any movement that moves our entire body, plus we have the option of adding external load with a barbell, causes the most metabolic disruption to your body as far as any strength training movement goes. So that's why we love the squats so much. The high bar we're gonna show, we'll get Richard to um, just stand under the bar. There's two areas that we can load the barbell. One is on the upper traps and one is on the rear delts. That would be considered a low bar position. The high bar position is what we're gonna focus on today. Now, the key difference, there's also a front rack squat that we're gonna work on later on in the program but the key difference here from low bar to high bar is that we change the loading variable on the body. When we go low bar, we tend to bend forward more. With more hip hinge, we're working more glute, hamstring and lower back. With the higher bar and even the front rack squat brings this into play more, we're loading the quads more and relying on that quad and glute development more so than the hamstring and lower back. So we'll get Richard to unrack the bar. The first thing you'll notice here and I want you to pay attention to is his hand position. Now Richard's got very good shoulder mobility so he's able to grip the bar very narrow and essentially that's what you want. The tighter we can compress the structure up here and the more we can bring the elbow behind, the more we drive up the central nervous system and the more likely he's going to be switched on down in his core muscles. Just rack the bar again Richard. So the first cue when we get under the bar, and this is super important guys, what happens up here in the shoulders and the hands by gripping the bar, we call it white knuckling the bar because he, his knuckles will go white when I can see that he's gripping it tight. This dramatically upregulates the nervous system and we get much better muscle recruitment throughout the entire body. So I always say as a great cue, tight in the hands and shoulders means tight in the core, tight in the core means safe and strong, okay? Let's go, we'll demonstrate a couple of reps. Now, Richie's in barefoot because he's got such good mobility. We either recommend squatting barefoot or with lifters. And the lifters are usually eight millimeter or 16 millimeter, depending on what you're going for. We always squat either barefoot or in lift. We never recommend squatting in pumps or runners because the sole or the surface of the contact point is too soft and it's not good for squatting. All right, Richie, let's take a nice big deep breath. Chest is proud, nice and slow down. Beautiful, driving out. Chest is proud, big deep breath, nice and slow down, driving out. We'll do one more rep. Chest is proud, Beautiful, driving out. All right, rack it up. We've got a spectator cruising around on the floor here, my son. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that it's quite difficult to see whether Rich is breaking in the hip or the knee, and there is a lot of debate as to whether you should break in the hip or break in the knee first. In my understanding, it's not an area that you need to overthink, but we usually cue people to break in the knee first and then follow it down into the squat. The depth of your squat is going to come down to three primary variables. The main variable is the length of his femur in relation to his tibia and spine. 
The pitch of the acetabula in his hip joint, so the angle that the greater trochanter in the femur comes out of the hip joint. Some people, especially women, have a pitch where the femur actually come out on an angle. And then also, his ability to dorsiflex. Just go into a split squat here for me. So the ability to dorsiflex the ankle here. Those three key elements will dictate what your squat looks like. Do not let anyone tell you that you need to squat a certain way. It's about making sure that you explore those three elements, your ankle, your hip, acetabular socket, and the length of the femur, tibia, in relation to your spine. Now, the hacks that we need to understand. If you are a long femur person, so the femur is much longer than the tibia, then you're gonna need to widen your stance and foreshorten the femur, otherwise you're gonna end up falling forward. If you've got a restricted or compromised dorsiflex in the ankle, you're gonna need to turn your toes out a little more than someone with much bigger mobility or range of motion in the the ankle and if your acetabula are pitched outward as opposed to forward then you're absolutely going to need to turn your knees out otherwise squatting is going to impinge the pelvis and the hips so make sure that you spend a little bit of time with minimal load on the bar exploring those three variables once we explore those three variables you'll know what your ideal setup is so we'll go through a couple of little changes in the setup with Richard here and we'll show you what that might look like. So if Richard had really long femur in relation to his tibia, I'd get him to go wider. So just go out into a wider stance, a little bit wider. Okay, beautiful. Now you'll watch as he squats, it's gonna look a lot different to what he just did before, okay? There are people out there where that will be your optimal squat. Okay, now just for argument's sake, go completely parallel with feet inside the shoulders. With very good range of movement, you will be able to squat like that. But most people, that will feel ridiculously uncomfortable. Rack it up again. Now, the, the last thing that I'll say is that people often, often get told that the ankle, actually, you go into dorsiflexion there for me, that the ankle, the knee, should never travel further than the toe. It is total bullshit. If the knee was not able to travel further than the toe, we'd never be able to take a flight of stairs. Watch what happens next time you walk down a flight of stairs. Your knee travels past your toe all of the time. Now, this is very, very natural for the body. It's very comfortable for the knee to go into full flexion. And in fact, there's less patellofemoral pressure in this position than there is at 90 degrees. At 90 degrees, we've got maximum patellofemoral pressure, maximum shearing force and torque through the knee, and then it starts to back off to only about 30% when we're at full flexion. So ideally, you want to find your stance and your setup and be able to get into that full range of movement because it's going to reduce the friction in the knee for the change in direction. And that's when the tension and the pressure in the knee capsule is at its maximum. So you don't ideally want to be stopping at the most pressure in the knee and then changing direction. You want to be able to move through that nice and smoothly. The other benefit to taking your knee into full range of movement like that is that it lubricates the joint. It's a synovial joint, it's filled with fluid, and it's the only real way that we get nutrients transported into the deep areas of that joint structure. We don't get a lot of blood flow into the knee joint, so we rely on that synovial fluid to clean it out and to transport nutrients. Regarding tempo for the squat movement, in most cases you want to control the tempo on the way down. The eccentric movement on the way down is where the majority of the hypertrophy will occur in the muscle bodies. That's where the most metabolic damage is being caused. So slowing down the eccentric tempo is ideal if you're bodybuilding, if you're trying to gain size in your lower limbs. Uh, always, usually for a squat, we maximally put output on the concentric. So Richard wants to be exploding out of the bottom end. He's controlling very nicely on the way down. He's comfortably finding his end range and then he's putting maximal concentric attraction and speed on the way back up. And that's a really good way to train because it's functional. It trains the body the way you generally want to use your power, which is explosive.
The last thing I want to cover is breathing. Now breathing is a debatable topic with strength training, but we believe that the Valsalvic breathing method is ideal for probably 80% of the people. That is where we take a nice big deep breath, we hold our breath for the eccentric and concentric rep, then we breathe and go again. Now where it wouldn't be suggested or ideal is someone who suffers quite high blood pressure because when we do hold our breath, especially under increased loads, the blood pressure will go up a little bit. So if you're already compromised, if your blood pressure is already elevated, it's gonna make it a little bit worse during that repetition, in which case I would say, take a deep breath in on the way down and breathe out on the way up. That person is never going to lift as heavy as someone who can follow a Valsalvic breathing method because when we take that deep breath in and hold the breath, our diaphragm and our core is fully contracted and hardened, which is giving us really good support in the spine. The moment we exhale, we lose the rigidity of our core and our spine is now compromised under load. So it is definitely the ideal breathing method for heavy lifting and barbells, that's what it's for. Barbells are for heavy lifting, so we try and stick to that. Now that is everything you need to know to optimize and nail the execution of your high bar barbell back squat. I promise the biggest mistake people are making and this is it. It's failure to recognize and address the structural nuances in the body that I spoke about, those three things. So what Richard's doing right now is one way that you can work around a compromised ankle dorsiflexion range of movement. He's got heel elevation. We have these great steel plates made up that we help people with. There are some people that are gonna have bone structure issues that just will not allow that dorsiflexion to occur. And if that's you, you can, you can make small adaptations by stretching it, but it's never gonna get as good as someone like Richard or me who can really squat ass to grass. This is a great little workaround. The other thing that you need to consider is the setup because it is individualized for everyone. So make sure that you explore your body's anatomy and overcome any structural abnormalities before you start loading up the bar. Hope you like that video, Tribe. We go live daily with our UNITV morning motivation show. We talk about everything to do with health and fitness. Make sure you subscribe so that you can join the conversation live. Remember, hit the notification bell and you'll be notified every time a video goes up. We also do tutorials just like this one every week. Until next time, thanks for joining us. People are making and this is it. Failure to recognize and address the, uh, the, 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 start again.